I thought we should just do some, um, just a casual blender stream today. My idea is to just go through a bunch of different tutorial to topics. Because I get so many requests for tutorials. Let's just try and gather it in all in one video, you know? Space tutorial? I do have a really simple setup. Just to make your world into like this space star background completely procedurally. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good uh, suggestion. First, what we want to do, render properties and set our render engine to cycles. Let's right click, vertical split. And let's change this one to shader editor. Let's change it from object to world. We're going to take our left viewport here and just hold down Z and change this to rendered. Now we will see whatever is happening. Go to preferences and make sure you have the node wrangler add-on installed. So now you can select the background and press Control T. And this will just add a bunch of stuff that we are going to need. We don't need the environment texture, but it's really easy to swap this out. Select the environment texture, Shift S, and then set the texture to noise texture. We have to increase the background strength. There we go. Now you can see we have this noise texture in our background. I want to make a color ramp. So let's go Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, and then just click and drag and place this on top. This becomes black and white. And then you can play around with this color ramp to just really get out some details here. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. Because if we go over to the mapping here, and now you can select all these at the same time. So if you click and drag down and then to the side, and then you can hold down Shift, now we can scale this down, for example. Let's set the scale to maybe 20. That's good. And now you can see this is starting to look a little bit like a universe. But there's more magic to this. Uh, let's actually lower the detail of the noise texture a little bit. Let's tweak the color ramp even further. I just want this to be barely visible. See this? There we go. Now you can see we have these stars. We're going to keep tweaking the stars, but it's a little bit easier to tweak the stars if we have something in our scene. So let's make a plane and let's make a sun. Let's rotate it a little bit and let's just make a cube. Select the cube and press G and Z and then one. So it just rests on top of this ground. So now we have something in our scene, which makes this look a little bit more like space, I think. We want to make these stars less uniform because if we make a camera now, so now this is our camera view. Look at that, space camera. Select our camera, right click, depth of field distance, and let's set this to the cube. Under object data properties, you can turn on depth of field and you can set it to maybe 0.1. Yeah, so now we're getting these beautiful stars. And this is where you're starting to see that this is not a real starry sky, you know? We're gonna need to have some more stars in the background and then we want some bright ones that are popping up. It's a really easy thing to do actually because we are just going to make one layer, which is this layer that we've already made, and then we're going to make another layer of stars below it, which has um, denser and smaller stars which will make this really beautiful star atmospheric vibe, which is amazing. In the shader editor, select all of this and press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's move this over here and let's go Shift A, color, mix RGB, and just click and drag this over here. And then let's take this one and mix. And instead of setting this to mix, let's set it to add. So they will be added on top of each other. Also, let's uh, set the factor to one. You can hold Control Shift and then just left click on something. Then you will view that uh, so let's here, here we're looking at the noise texture, here we're looking at the combined result. So what's really nice about that is that we can do any change to this, like set this to 25, and that looks really good actually. And uh, now we can see, okay, this looks like this, and this looks like this. I actually really just like that result that we have here, but I want it to fade more into like this gray atmosphere that eventually becomes the stars. Let's call these small stars. And uh, these are the big stars. So now what we can do is that we can take these small stars. You see this gradient here. This is a linear gradient. We wanted to make it even smoother. So we can start out by, let's move it over here a little bit. And see, now we're getting a lot more stars. And let's change it from linear to, um, let's try ease. Okay, let's try B spline. Okay, nice. Click a plus, add some more here. And let's change this to black and now we're getting this really smooth fall off here. Let's lower the brightness here, increase this a little bit. Now this is all about tweaking. Here is the base setup, which I can recommend that you just tweak and find and see what looks good. So far we're 20% of the way, you know what I mean? The restoring 80% is where the real magic happens. You can, for example, combine this with a sky texture, which I did for the flame sword animation do, that's all procedural, but it's a really powerful way to just get some stars. So now if you view this from the camera again, you can see that we have these beautiful depth of field um, stars in the background here. You can even um, increase the strength. So let's set it to three, for example. And now it's this really beautiful space background. Look at that. Let's actually do a render of this, but uh, let's turn off, let's turn down the depth of field. So let's have a look at this render. Nice. 
feels like a good space render, you know? So that's how to make a space in Blender. Any more tutorial suggestions? Realistic EV render. Um, here's an interesting thought I have about realistic renders in EV. So in cycles, if you want to make realistic renders in cycles, the engine does a lot for you. So you have to wait for the render to be finished, you know? But in EV, you're working for a long time to really optimize a realistic render, and then the render goes faster. So I feel like the the dry the diagram is is always the same length. It's just that in cycles. Blender is doing more of the work instead of you having to really tweak and optimize stuff, you know? Oh, bloom effect in cycles. Let's actually try that. It's incredibly important that you do this because if you don't do it, your scene will look flat. And if you have a great glow, you might actually be able to do photorealism without any textures. It's amazing. If we start with a simple scene, it's much easier to add the glow later or set up the glow because we can't really have nothing. Oh, we should have had the space scene, you know? We just made the space. Do I have it over here? Yeah, we have the space scene. Oh, that's really nice. So let me increase the size of this, the strength of the sun. We need a really strong sun, maybe four. Yeah, this is strong. And then we need to change the depth of field to something higher, like 0.5. Perhaps we should try and use uh, Suzanne instead. So here we have Suzanne floating on a plane in space. I want to do a render. Let's render this with uh, 1024 samples. So as you can see already from this render that these edges are way too sharp. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about. If you go under scopes here, you can see this sample line, which is amazing. It's a really powerful tool. Here you can see if we drag a sample line here. Look at that. Look at how incredibly steep this is. If I'm holding my right click button, you can see that this is almost completely dark. It's almost pitch black, right? But that just never happens right next to something that is quite bright. So you want this to be a little bit um, falling off, a little bit smoother. And so to do this, let's make a glare setup. The glare that we are going to use to make this look more realistic is added in the compositor. So it happens after you've done the render. To open this image in the node uh, or in the compositor, let's go use nodes and let's click backdrop. So now what we can do is that we can just press control shift and click on the render layers. And now we have our viewer. So this viewer is what we see, and this compositor is what our saved blend file will save us. Let's go Shift A, and let's add a, con a filter, glare. This is the easiest way to do this by far. So you just click and drag and place this on top of the composite, and then let's hold Control Shift, and then let's view the glare. So now nothing happens. Could it be the threshold? Yeah, okay, so it works. We wanna change some settings here. We wanna change it from streak, to fog glow, this is really powerful. And I like to change the quality from medium to high. And I like to change the size to nine. And then one more really important thing is to set the threshold to zero. Because if you have a threshold based glow, no matter what software you're using, if you have a threshold based glow, that's not really how glow works in the real life. The more light you have in the scene, the more it's bouncing around inside the glass of the lens of your camera and then before it hits the sensor. So a threshold is just really unnatural because the light just never has a hard cut. But I understand why people would like to use it. Now, this is too much glow, I think. This looks like a ghost movie. So let's lower the mixed uh, value. If you set it to minus one, there is no glare. And if you set it to one, there is only glare. So we want to set it to minus nine point, oh, sorry minus 0.95 and this is really subtle it might you might not even be able to see this in youtube video let's increase it a little bit more minus 92 now let's see what this looks like before and after before and after it's not much of a difference but if you do this to all your renders it really helps this is a really powerful way to just add that a little bit of um, realism to your scene it it's extremely helpful just to make this sh easier to see for you let's just really increase this that's too much i wouldn't go this far but i think now you can see it how it works so here is our render result now with the compositor and let's set the composite to view layer again and here you can see it without i have exaggerated this a lot because this is not usually how much glare you would need let's have a look at the at the sample line again let's start over here look at that it's a really smooth gradient fall off. Here is what it looks like with the view layer. It just goes completely like a cliff, right? 
and you never want to see this in a real render. And then if you set it to composite instead, now we have the glare. Now you can see that this just falls off. There's one more thing that I usually do. Usually do. I add a really subtle distort lens distortion and just place it here in front. And then just set the dispersion, <laughs> dispersion to 0 0.01, which just really helps when adding just a little bit. You see this on the stars towards the edges here? You can see that we have this... Um, a tiny little bit of chromatic aberration. It has to be subtle. If you're doing, if you're overdoing this, people will just back off and say that just looks unnatural. But all lenses have just a little bit of lens distortion. So I go somewhere between uh, 0 0.008 and um, 0 0.01. This is the setup I use for almost all my renders, maybe like this. So if you just use this as part of your default Blender startup file, it's one of those little things that you can just enable and it just really helps. Now I actually think I'm gonna have to take off um, my hoodie because uh, it's a little bit hot here. A quick shout out to the Discord. You can join the Paul of Your Viewport community, which is an amazing place. We're over 6,000 people. And you will also get a lot of great uh, input if you want to share your work or uh, just learn. So yeah, I can recommend joining this. I click the accept invite button. I can recommend doing that. And then I also can recommend that you join the Patreon. It's the best way to support me. It's not a big production or anything. It's just, uh, or that's probably obvious, but yeah. Support independent tutorial makers.